In this video, we're gonna be going over how to finance your Amazon business. And today's tip of the day is do not take a business advice off of people that don't own a business. And I know that sounds fairly obvious, but at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you some examples that you might find pretty funny and you'll probably relate to quite a lot. So financing your Amazon business is obviously a massive important part of your business. If you can't buy any stock, you can't grow your business, you can't make any money. So a lot of people's problems are they're young when they want to get into Amazon. They necessarily don't have a lot of money and we're going to look at a few options here of what you can do, how you can gain finance, how you can use your own finance, how you can use different things like credit cards, loans to finance your business and the kind of positives and negatives of each thing. So obviously the first option would be any personal savings that you have. Now, there's obviously some positives and negatives to using your own personal savings to finance a business. The positives are you don't have to pay any interest because it's not a loan, it's your own money. So you're not paying the bank any interest or any loan company any interest. Obviously you don't have to do that with your own money. So that's, that's a really good thing that you don't have to pay extra for money. It's free money in essence. The other good thing is you're making your money work for you. So instead of it sitting in the bank gaining a small amount of interest, although interest rates are quite high at the moment, they are due to come back down at some point. Instead of it just gaining a little bit of interest, you're actually making it work for you a lot harder and you could be revolving your money every single month making you know, an 8 to 10% margin. You also don't have the stress of having to pay anything back within a deadline. Obviously, if you take out a loan, you're going to have to pay it back at some point. You're going to have to pay it back monthly or bi-weekly. And sometimes when you're selling stuff and it might not sell as fast as you originally thought, it can be a little bit stressful when you have to make those payments on time. The negatives of using your own money is you only have a, you may only have a limited amount of savings. Obviously, if you've only got a small amount of savings, it's not going to really stretch very far. From personal experiences, if you've got less than £5,000 to invest in an Amazon business, then, you know, you might be all right for... A small period of time but if you go near the VAT threshold then you're going to struggle to make enough money to cover all of the expenses and pay yourself a wage or even grow the business at an acceptable rate. Also you've got to think about if you're using your own personal funds there's no guarantee that you're going to make every step correctly there's no guarantee you're going to buy products that are going to sell well if you don't do the initial research so there is always the risk that you are going to lose your original investment into the business, something could go wrong and you end up actually losing money. Option number two then is a charge card. Now a lot of companies offer charge cards. They're a little bit more uh, easy to get accepted um, other than credit cards, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, we've used a charge card for a while. We have a charge card. We have all these things to be honest with you, but we have a Amex charge card. Now the difference between a charge card and a credit card is with the uh, charge card, you have to make a full monthly balance payment at the end of the month. If you don't make that payment, then you will be um, gaining quite a high interest on the charge card. You have to make that payment. If It's technically classed as a default if you don't make that payment, which obviously goes against your credit score, and it's a very bad thing. So you have to make the full payment. If you spend 15000 at the you know 45 days or whatever, you have to pay 15000 There's no paying the minimum and getting away with it and giving you that little bit of extra time. You have to pay the full balance. Now, the positive of obviously having a charge card, there's a few things there. It can keep you on your toes so you don't overspend and make silly mistakes, which I quite like. It keeps you on your toes. It keeps you vigilant and it makes sure that you don't kind of get a bit overexcited in, in buying stock and you're not buying the wrong things. Now, Another one is obviously they give you a good amount of money. With charge cards, you can usually get a bit of a higher limit. I mean, we've got a pretty high limit on ours. The way the Amex one works is if you one month spend 10,000 then pay 10,000, they'll up it for the next month. Maybe you'll be able to spend 12. Then if you pay 12, they'll up it again and it'll keep going and keep going until you have a nice big limit on your charge card. And obviously the Amex has other um, good points like Amex points you know you can buy flights you can buy anything you can convert the points into Amazon vouchers you can literally buy whatever you want with the points it's pretty good now when you have a credit card obviously you can use credit cards a little bit more difficult to get accepted by you may not get the perks like the uh, Amex points but some Amex credit cards do give you that kind of stuff like the Avos card and with a credit card you can then pay off a minimum amount for example, a minimum amount of 8% on £10,000. So if you spend £10,000, you know, to not affect your credit score, you can pay off just £800 for the month. That way, if you get yourself into a bind, if you get yourself into a situation where you've overbought, overspent, and then the stock doesn't sell as fast as possible, 
and you're getting a bit worried, you won't be able to make the full payment. You can pay off the minimum and then pay off the rest the following month. Now, people do get themselves into a credit card trap when it comes to things like that. And they just keep paying off the, the minimums. They keep building their credit. And what you'll find is they're actually starting to gain a lot of interest. They're not making money because effectively they've got so much cash flow running through the business that they're not realizing how much they're being charged on interest they're not they're not kind of understanding how the credit card works and a lot of people do fall into the credit card trap when it comes to amazon so it's extremely important that you do your own research on credit cards make sure whatever credit card you go for you look at the terms and conditions and you fully understand how much you can spend and pay back reasonably within a month Option number four is alternative funding sources, and these are going to be websites that are specially designed to give funding to Amazon sellers or eBay sellers. Some of these websites include Sellers Funding, which we are actually currently using, and there will be a link in the description for Sellers Funding. Now, Sellers Funding can be really good because you've got a different um, set of options for funding. They do a few different things. They do working capital, which is obviously just a loan, and they do things like daily advance. Now, the daily advance is where they basically supplement the amount of money that Amazon is holding in your account. So at one point, we may have had £8,000 on hold in Amazon, and they'll give you that £8,000 because they know that is going to come out of Amazon at some point. And for a small fee, a few percent, they'll give you that in advance so that you can add it to your cash flow. Now, the working capital is um, pretty much what it says on the tin. They just give you a loan over a certain period of time, and the loan can be anywhere up to 25,000, I think. And you'll be charged kind of a certain percent. Um, I think their going rate is about seven, eight percent at the moment or something like that. The way they explain the loan is if you pay it back within a good amount of time, then the next loan you'll get can be more and it can be at a lower percentage. So you kind of work with these companies to get better rates and these are a really good source of funding, but you're not likely to be able to get these types of funding unless you've been trading for about six months. And lastly, the last option to um, get funding is from Amazon directly. Now these loans come from Amazon directly. They'll show up on your dashboard and they'll offer you the maximum amount of money that you can have. And they're often quite a lot. And usually for quite a good uh, percentage as well. They don't usually offer you this if you haven't been trading for a year on Amazon. So if you haven't been selling for a year, then you're not likely to get the Amazon loan option. And they only do it on accounts that they think are obviously good but it is a really good funding option. You just have to be careful not to take too much money that you then can't use and buy stock with. It's always about, if you take 50,000 pounds out, you gotta know you gotta be able to spend 50,000 pounds. You don't wanna take out too much money and then have that money sat in the bank and not be able to work for you. So I hope all of those points have given you a little bit of insight into how you can fund your Amazon business. I mean, we pretty much do all of those things and it really helps massively with cash flow. It helps us keep our business on the incline, but it isn't easy to get accepted for all of these things and to get everything working together. Again, is hard, but hopefully you can make it work for you and um, you'll take this advice on board. Now, going back to the daily tip of the day, don't take business advice of people that doesn't have a business. I'll give you some examples. Um, often when you're doing retail arbitrage, you'll go into a shop and someone will ask you, they'll say, oh, what are you doing? And you say, oh, I'm selling it on Amazon. And they'll start showing you lots of different products that sell really well. And they'll try and get you to buy a lot of this stuff. And it just makes no sales on Amazon or it's private label. And the bottom line is, although they're being very nice and that they're being kind and they're, they're trying to help, they often have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. And they waste your time and it doesn't help you in the slightest. And that can apply for a lot of different things. When family members try and give you advice on a business when they don't have a business, although it's kind of, you don't wanna be rude and you wanna take their advice on board, it's definitely not best to take advice from business that, from, from people that don't have any experience in your area of expertise. And Amazon, a lot of people don't understand it. They don't understand how it works. You're better off getting advice from the professionals or other sellers on Amazon. And that's the bottom line. I hope you're all having a good day and I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be posting more soon. I have a new computer turning up in a couple of days. Um, so I've been kind of waiting on that because it's a little bit harder for me to record at the moment. Um, if you did enjoy, subscribe, like, and let me know your thoughts in the comments. And I'll see you in the next video.